Switzerland 2, Italy nil. And my boys, Italy, are out of the tournament. The champions are done. That was so sad to watch. Like, that was completely, completely shameful from Italy. I don't believe I was supporting a team that had no hope like that. That was not even close. We didn't, we didn't deserve anything from this game. We didn't deserve even a single goal. First shot on target came in the 72nd minute. 72nd minute, guys. What is that? What is that? But shout out to Switzerland. Switzerland were amazing. Amazing in this game. First 15 minutes, we could not leave our own box. They were, they were all up on us like a rush, right? I had notes. I'm just going to prepare them. Yeah, first 15 minutes, they were just all up on us like a rush. Like these guys were told us that we're not going to leave the... Um, our D. Um, one thing that I saw that was uh, that the Italians just could not adapt to was the Swiss actually kind of changed. They changed some things, right? So number one, Ricardo Rodriguez was not going, was not inverting. And I, I feel like that really put them off. R Ricardo Rodriguez was not inverting at all, at all. And that completely put off um, the rhythm of the Italians. Well, one of the things that put them off. Um, secondly, Again, and I keep saying, the movement up front of Ndoy, Ebisha, um, Vargas. Like, they move a lot. All those guys move a lot. But one thing is that this time, Ebisha was really maintaining his width. But then Vargas and, um, what's his name, Ndoy, the two wingers who were on either side of Mbolo, would then sometimes come and overload one side. Like, you'd find the two of them on one side. Sometimes you find them on the other side. And that is how the first goal came about, right? Um, it was just 10 minutes before halftime. The, both of them are all are now on the left side. Now Jacques is on the left side as well, and Ricardo Rodriguez on the left side. Like they just overloaded one side, and then now Freula has a free run into the into the middle of the box because the Italians don't know who they are marking anymore. Immediately Freula cuts, uh, comes back in. Vargas has the ball, cuts the ball to his right foot. He's just been given the ball for by I think it was Ndoy or Ricardo Rodriguez, one of the two. All he has to do is just pick a pass, but the pass was really really good. Picked a beautiful pass to Freula, who's running in. First touch wasn't the best, but was good enough to at least give him a chance. Short uh, deflection over Mancini, and the ball goes into the back of the net to make it 1-0. And at this point, Italy did not deserve a single thing from this game. I'm telling you, the Switzerland, the Switzerland midfield was just immense. Granite Xhaka. Granite Xhaka. Granite was everywhere. Like, it reminds me of the first game they played. The first game they played was against Scot no, not Scotland. It was against um, Hungary. The first game against Hungary, Granit Xhaka was man of the match. To me, I, I thought Ebisha would be very close, but just in terms of how the... Well, Ebisha scored and assisted, I think. But the way Xhaka ran the midfield, like the Italians just couldn't lay a finger on them. Skamaka up front, like to me, Skamaka was... It just gave nothing, right? Because even if you're going to play a low block, at least run, right? Give, give the... Swiss midfield, something to think about. He didn't run. His hold-up play today was not the greatest. He was not running into the channels. Like, everything that you expected him to do with how they were playing, they were just not doing. And I just believe, like, everything just, yeah, they they just really messed up. <laughs> like, this entire game, the Italian game plan was not working at all. Jorginho didn't start the game, so they had, uh, who did they have in midfield? I am forgetting his name. Uh, Fagioli. Fagioli, number 21. You gave the ball away on several occasions. You were just, like, I don't know. I, I get the thinking of not starting Jorginho because you need ball carriers and you need a lot more energy in midfield. But I think it just really backfired. Again, losing DiMarco was also quite key because DiMarco was actually um, injured. So he couldn't start this game. So losing DiMarco was was really, really big. When they lost DiMarco and we all knew that he was, going, he was not going to start the game, I knew it was just going to be a tough day, especially with Damian coming in for him. So yeah, Damian came in at left back. Damian also didn't provide much. Like the theme of Italian, the Italians is just losing the ball. They lost the ball on any occasion and every occasion they could get. They were trying to play from the back, but it's just not in them, right? Like it reminds me of the early days of Arsenal when um, Peter Cech was being made to play from the back. It was just not in their DNA. Like, they just can't do it. You know, like, it's not natural. It doesn't come naturally. And as a result, you end up losing the ball several times. You end up giving the... You win the ball, you're giving it back straight away. But shout out to Switzerland as well. Like, they, they pressed higher than normal. They normally don't press this high. They pressed 
really, really high on this game. And it was, it was, it was them telling the Italians, you guys are going to play from the back. We may not be the best team from uh, pressing at the front, but we're going to do it because we know you can't play from the back. And that game plan trumped the other game plan, right? The Swiss game plan trumped the Italian game plan simply because they found a weakness and they just pounced on it and they just doubled down on it. Mbolo had a chance early on in the game, actually, I think after 20 something minutes. I thought he was offside, but he was actually, when you check the replay, he really wasn't. And um, it was a good save from Donnarumma. Donnarumma had two good moments, like where he had really good saves that one and the reader shot. But for me, the one that is just unforgivable was the second goal. The second goal, literally, Italy, it, it, like this is second half. The ref blows for the whistle. Italy have eight men in a line at the halfway line. So they start early, but then the ref kind of lets it go. So he's like, you just go. Then they start. This, the ball goes to Fagioli, and you only have one job. Your job is just to chip it over, right? Chip it over. Everyone has run in front. Because if you lose the ball, you're in a vulnerable position. He kicks it low, goes to Xhaka. At this moment, there's literally seven Italian players behind him. The ball, they don't score on the first phase of play, but they just, they attack, they are patient. And when the ball comes back to Vargas, Vargas just puts it into the bottom, like in the top corner. And I'm just like... It was, it, was, it was a beautiful strike. It was a beautiful strike from Vargas. And yeah, now it was 2-0. And now Italy have everything to do because at halftime they had made a change. Who did they bring on? They had brought on um, Zakani for El Sharawi. Zakani who scored more or less a very beautiful, a beautiful goal, almost similar to what Vargas did, but his was more of like a fast touch. But at that point you just it just felt like there was no chance it just felt like the italians had no chance in this game cuz they didn't prove, they didn't have any shots on target they're not making good chances they're not a threat on set pieces how bastoni normally is obviously calafiori didn't play this game he was suspended i don't know how much of a factor that played in but even if he was playing in this game i don't think there was um, anything much you'd have done to be honest um man switzerland was just much better and I think now we have to agree with Xhaka. Xhaka said, like, after the draw with Germany, he was like, us guys were very close to beating this team, but you guys are not giving us the respect that we deserve, yeah? And um, I've just seen the replay. It was Ndoye who passed to Vargas, who assisted Freuler. Um, Yeah, he was like, you guys need to give put more respect on our name because, honestly, we are much better than people are giving us credit for. And to be honest, after this performance, we have to. We have to. Coming to the tournament... Coach was a bit under fire. Um, what's the names? What's the coach? What's the coach's name? I keep forgetting his name. Uh, Murat Yakin. Murat Yakin was a bit under fire because of the performances. A bit like lethargic. Like they're not, they're not that great in qualifying. They ended up finishing second in their group, if I'm not wrong. But they came into the tournament and did what they had to do. They are just they're a good tournament team. And then this is another quarterfinal that they qualified for. You know, they just keep making it to the quarters consistently over and over again so yeah man big shout out to switzerland like nothing much i can add to that they were quite impressive i was quite impressed by how they played and for italy it's back to the drawing board i know it, it was more of this was more of also to be fair to spalletti he's only been in the job for i think nine months or ten months whatever it is um and you all know international coaching is difficult like you only have a team for like eight or nine days every two months and even when they come for those days you have out of those eight or nine days you have to play international like you have to play your like your games during those days so ideally you only have like three training sessions with them every two months so it's tough for you to start implementing what you did but what is interesting or what is fascinating or what is just mind-boggling all of those things in one is how well we played in the first game like we were so good in the first game and then subsequent games it's just been you know average Against Spain, average. Against uh, Croatia, definitely deserve to lose that game, but just pulled one out of the heart, you know. Um, this one played, outplayed, played, outplayed, outthought, outworked by the Swiss from the get go. So, I think that's that's just what is going to give Spalletti sleepless nights. To be fair, and myself as well, I'm just like, how how do you play so well in the first game, and then your next game is just so bad? So. Anyway, all in all, uh, great win by the Swiss. They are through to the quarterfinals. Um, I, I can't tell you right now who they're going to play. Uh, well, I can't remember. 
but I could I could I could as well just check. <laughs> I could as well just check who's in that part of the group. It is, it is, it is, it is. Mm, I believe they're on the good side though. They're on the England side. I don't think they're on the Spain whoever side. Um Oh, they played the win of England and Slovakia, which is probably going to be England. Then they'll knock out England because, yeah, England are just average. But, yeah, that is it. Switzerland are through after beating Italy 2-0.